Well, hello. Yeah. All right. All right. Are we? Are we? Are we live? We're live. Doing it. We're live. We got some people cool. on. Excellent. Hey, people. Um, since our sound check, I'm rocking the backwards baseball cap. <laughs> About two months overdue for a haircut. <laughs> oh, I just lost your audio. There we go. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, I got the quarantine hair over here too. What's awesome. Up? We got Kent, Steve, Rick, Jason. Hey, what's up? How you guys doing? Thanks for tuning in. So we got about uh, about fifteen people on board so far. I'm Perfect. sure more people are going to come in as we progress through this. Um, but my name is Matt Santry, um, the founder of Well Paid Musician. I am also a performing musician, a singer songwriter. And the first thing I want to do is uh, welcome Austin of the Slow Drag. I want to thank Austin for uh, taking his time out today to share his knowledge about what um, I believe is a really important topic right now. So we're going to talk about how to make a living from live streaming. And you guys are welcome to ask questions. Uh, we just, you know, let's let's just start with a little bit of background and some information, and then we'll open up the floor. Um, I can see your comments here from Facebook and YouTube. And if like this, I can just bring it up. This is, hey, Steve, what's happening? Good afternoon. Cool. Um, so I'll just bring up questions like this as we um, once we open up the floor to questions. So if you have something that you're thinking of right now, feel free to type it in, uh, you know, and I can go through and pull it up when it's time to ask questions. All right. So uh, without further ado, let's welcome Austin of the Slow Drag. Hey, y'all. <laughs> you know, it's one of the first things that you notice when you start performing online is the silence in between all the songs. It's weird. <laughs> so I have some, some applause that I can hear. <laughs> so, all right, man. Um, why don't you just give us some background? Um, we, we chatted a little bit before this. Mm -hmm. um, and... Where did you start your your career? Were you in LA or what were you doing? Yeah, I did. I did start my music career in LA years ago. I moved to LA uh, in my late teens, and after being there for a couple of years, I joined uh, a couple of bands. But one of them stuck for a few years, about five six years, um, which really helped me uh, understand the music industry at the time. This was like the early two thousands. And, you know, we, we, we went on some tours and we had some deals and things like that. And then that fell apart and I started to go solo, but it really wasn't until I moved out to Nashville a few years ago that I got into streaming. Um, I started, I started streaming on stage at just here and there, uh, in order to stay in touch with the people that I had met on the road and play music with them. Um, and I thought it was really, really cool. Uh, and then I got into streaming regularly, um, uh, maybe just about three and a half years ago, I read an article by Ari Herstand, uh, who does Ari's Take, which is a really great uh, blog. If you guys don't know Ari's Take, I definitely would, would recommend checking it out and searching their archives. Yeah, totally. Um, Ari's great. He wrote an article uh, about a bunch of live streaming musicians and a handful of different platforms they were using. Um, and so I saw this and I was like, oh, this makes sense. I understand the streaming business model. I understand like what you can do with streaming in terms of connecting with people and playing to not only a, a growing audience, but the audience that you've garnered uh, through your social media posts or being out on the road or just playing in general. Um, I saw that there were a bunch of people doing this all the time for a living. And I was like, oh, you know what? I, I, I love being home. I love playing music. Let's see if we can combine these two. And so uh, in November of 2016, I quit my day job. Uh, I was waiting tables out here in Nashville uh, and just decided to dive right into streaming, doing it just about every day. Awesome. So it was, I guess, just knowing that the possibility that other people were making a living, other people were doing it, inspired you to say, let me give it a shot. Let me. Absolutely. And uh, to that point, like these people, uh, a lot of people you might find 
uh, making a living as live streamers, while they do have, um, they do have uh, a few other ancillary things going on, uh, as everyone should, I think, especially independent musicians. Um, they're not big household names. Um, you know, they're just people doing their things like so many of us independent artists, you know, being in Nashville, I know plenty of people who are out on the road six to eight to 10 to 12 months a year. Um, and they're making a living, but they'll never be household names or anything like that. And, and all that to say, like being a household name is neither here nor there. If you're able to make a living from your music, that is the victory. Exactly. And so this is live streaming is either an avenue to that or a tool in your toolbox to help you uh, with your income streams. Okay, so speaking of that, what what else are you doing aside from streaming? Is there, I mean, talking about ancillary things and sources of income? Yeah, you know, when I when I quit my job, uh, by the way, Matt, it's it's an I think it I want to say it came out in like August of 2016. Um, so it'd be a little bit of a dig to find that particular article. Oh, that's a question. Um, yeah. <laughs> but when I quit my job. One of the first things I did and something I recommend to everybody who's looking to, uh, looking to find the best revenue streams for them. I made a list of every, every time, every job I've ever had that paid me that was musical. So maybe it was, uh, um, like a lesson, a guitar or a singing lesson, or maybe it was, uh, I wrote a song for something, or maybe it was merch, or maybe it was, you know, a placement or anything that I could think of, you know, all of the things. And that, that let me know where my biggest revenue streams were, where the most potential, um, to make money was, um, and so right now, let's say the last year or so, the majority of my income comes from streaming. I would say 60 to 70% of my income comes from streaming. Um, the bulk of the rest of that, maybe 20% of it is Patreon. Um, you can use something like Patreon. You can, you can set up your very own subscription system and your website. There's a buddy of mine in town, Bradford Loomis, who uh, has bypassed things like Patreon and just does his very own subscription service through his website. Um, and then the rest, the last like 10% of my income would be like, um, I need a quick couple hundred bucks. So I'm going to go play downtown in Nashville, uh, or, you know, uh, things like merch trickle in, um, Spotify plays, these kinds of things that aren't like a huge, huge chunk of income, but you know, might count for a few thousand dollars over the course of a year. Yeah, and that would be the same if you were touring live, right? I mean, you're selling merch and absolutely, whatever. yeah, um, you know, licensing things like that. So, um, but I think the important thing is that the live stream that you're doing, just like an artist that's touring, that is creating the fan base. That's bringing in the new audience. Mm -hmm. and that's giving you the ability to make money from the streams because it's not just the same audience over and over, right? Well, most of the time it is, which is oh, interesting. I was okay. worried about that in the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, even when I was doing those stage it shows, there was like one month. Uh, I probably did stage it shows for maybe a year. Uh, okay. There was one month where I did one a week and I was like, wow, that's a lot of stage it shows. Um, but then I realized like, oh, you know, it's like these people uh, who enjoy the broadcasts, they'll come back time and time again. Um, okay just to hang out, just to be a part of the community. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Because that's what I'm wondering. Okay, so I, I've been streaming for probably, you know, since 2016, but not consistently, just kind of mm -hmm. doing it here and there. And now, you know, with the pandemic, obviously everyone's doing it. And um, I just started asking for tips. Like I wasn't ever asking for money before. Mm -hmm. um, and now that I'm doing it, like the response is awesome. But I don't anticipate that to continue in the same way. I think that people were being very supportive and generous. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, th I think it's, un you know, it's, 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 um, to expect that people are going to continue that every week is unrealistic. So that's, I guess my question is to maintain, 
effect because we talked about this before you said the attrition you you lose some fans you bring some new ones on so how do you do that how do you um, maintain enough of an audience uh, a lot of that has to do with consistency okay. when i first started broadcasting um like full-time broadcasting yeah in in november of 2016 is when i went full-time with it um i was broadcasting every day uh, for usually at least two hours, I'd say between two and five hours a day. And keep in mind, this is not like me picking up my guitar, sitting down at the piano and playing and singing, uh, for two to five hours. You know, right. it's, it's hanging out, it's chatting with people. It's, uh, you know, it's playing games and stuff like that. And uh, the, keeping people engaged is what's important. I mean, I do think that if you did the exact same thing every day, not only would you get bored, but your audience would get bored. Right. Um, and so uh, worrying about whether or not people are going to offer any sort of financial support on the daily, mm -hmm. um, might be, might be a, a, a negative place to put your thoughts. I'd say you know, really you want to focus, especially in the beginning on whether or not people are having a good time. Um, because just like, just like Instagram or Twitter or Facebook or YouTube or anything like that, if you've got, um, people that you like to follow that you don't necessarily know personally, um, you're, you, you're checking in with them most days and most days they have some kind of content to share with you. Um, like you think about big, big YouTubers like Philip DeFranco or Matt Pat, who does film theory, these kinds of people, uh, you know, Pootie Pie, they're putting out stuff every single day. And so that's kind of, um, that's, that's something to keep in mind if you're going to be building things on the internet, you know, it's like there, you can go see a live show and that has a little bit of a different impact on you and your memory and things like that. Uh, it, it makes it so you can still be really excited to go see another live show six months, 12 months down the line. Whereas I don't think that that same level of excitement applies to most music streams. Um, you know, there's going to be, uh, it's sort of like a, a, a slow trickle in, you know what I mean? And so doing it every day gives, gives people uh, that little, that little boost, that little feed of, uh, togetherness and dopamine and familiarity, um, that people really appreciate, you know, people, I, I, myself, we're all creatures of habit. You know, it's like, we like to look at the same things. We like to eat the same things. We like to know what's coming our way. Um, and that sort of reliability is, uh, is good for your audience. Okay. That's, that's a great way to answer the question because, I'm thinking, well, you know, if you're playing live and you're playing in your hometown every week, you're going to exhaust that audience pretty quick. Mm -hmm. um, but what you're talking about is the consistency in the way that people create content so that you're keeping it fresh. So you're, you're doing it consistently, but you're not just like playing the same set list or maybe sometimes you're not even playing. Maybe sometimes you're just hanging out. You're asking people how their day was or you're telling jokes or whatever. You're, you're playing a game. So mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I didn't think of any of that stuff. That's, that's really eye opening. And you know what I was thinking about before we started chatting today was, um, there, there are good real life models that obviously you can't recreate in your stream, but look at bands, especially like nineties, nostalgia bands, bands like, uh, Hanson or train or, uh, sister Hazel, uh, and even a, a couple more modern bands, like uh, maybe like Kid Rock or something like that. These people who do these event shows where they'll have like a festival weekend or a cruise or something like that. You know, it's like this is there's lots of music there, but there's also games and ways to interact with people and hang sessions and just like mm -hmm. people just being people. You know, there's a there's a there's a. Um, being online, being in front of a camera like this, um, it, it, it sort of, uh, diminishes the mystery of the artist and makes it a lot more like we're all just hanging out around a bonfire at a house party or something like that. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, if you keep it, if you keep it chill, you can keep your headspace clear and like not overwhelm yourself with being a one person production, um, and still provide 
cool things here and there, good connections here and there. Uh, that's 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 really what it's about, and I think that's why some of those things like uh, the rock bo rock boat or uh, you know M Melissa Etheridge's cruise or Hanson's Hanson Day weekend works so well for fans because it's not just like you know three four days of concert. You know, yep. it's, it's this meet and greet and this photo session, or you can do arts and crafts or any of these things. And you can apply these to your streams. You know, I, I'll do, I'll do games on streams. I'll do games like guess that song where I start to play a song. First person to guess it, it gets it. And, uh, you know, I'll do like brackets, like what's your favorite nineties band. Okay. This band versus that band. And then the next one, that band versus this band. So it's, it's all music related and it's all stuff that the fan base will generally enjoy. But again, it's not just like hours and hours of music. And the other thing you're doing on the streams is you're you're helping people meet each other and connect mm -hmm. through you know your your stream. So yeah. and and that's I see that so many times with like you talk about rock boat and things like that. People that meet and they become friends because they're fans and and they go to shows together. And the same thing happens on the streams. So that's that's really cool. And it's honestly, it's an amazing and heartwarming thing to witness. You know, there have been a handful of people that uh, began their relationships uh, in my streams in the chat room and then like, oh, we live close enough or we're both going to this show. Let's hang out and like grab coffee while we're in town. And then the online relationship becomes a real life relationship. And that's really cool. You know, that makes for a much longer, uh, better sustained connection. Okay, this, this is great stuff. I think I was thinking a little bit too linearly about performing and just thinking about, okay, well, it's like selling tickets, but, you know, you're opening my eyes to the experience, the connection, helping other people connect, and all the other things that go into the experience of a show or a hang. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. It's, really, it's really much more about the hang than it is putting on a live show. Yeah. You know, obviously you can put on a live show. There are lots of people that do that. Um, and by the way, Matt, I'm seeing questions in the chat, but I don't want to hijack your live stream and just go answering them willy nilly. But I t that's my that's my go to. I like to answer the questions. Well, we can shift gears. I was just thinking we'd wait to the end. But um, yeah, cool. if you wanted, I like I'm really I'm not I'm very flexible about how we can do this. Um, we don't have too many questions, but I just um, want anybody to feel ignored. Yeah, I think. Well, that's a good point. So let, let's do that. Let's go back, and um, I think the the first question um, I saw here was John wanted to know if I'd make a PDF summary. Absolutely, John is a member of the Well Paid Musician Club, and um, you know I will be kind of chopping this up and offering this to everybody in the group. Um, as a bonus for free. Um, Matt was asking if you're running the shows yourself or someone monitoring the comments. So do you want to take that one, Austin? Um, well, right now, and honestly, in all of the uh, all of the platforms that I've used, and I've used a number of platforms at this point, some of them multiple times, some of them just a couple of times to check it out. But uh, Right now, Twitch is my main platform. It's uh, I've only been on it for a few months, but I really love it. It's super, super personalizable, customizable. You can you can really do a lot to make the stream your own. But you know, on Twitch, I can assign people to moderate comments, so I don't have to always be uh, you know banning the trolls or whatever. Of which there aren't many. Honestly, you won't encounter that very often. And just a side tip about trolls. Uh, Give them a chance because oftentimes the people who come into your broadcast and are like, you know, talking, talking smack, you can, you can engage with them. And if they're, if they're hell bent on giving a broadcaster a hard time, they get banned. Easy peasy. Don't worry about it. Don't sweat it. But oftentimes these people, um, they're looking for a place to belong. They're looking for people to, uh, chat with and and I don't know just be friends with and they can become some of your biggest supporters if you give them a chance um I think I got a little off track with that one but anyway yeah Facebook <laughs> <laughs> Facebook uh Periscope uh you now was one that I used to use a long time Twitch like as long as you can be in contact with one person you know is going to be watching your stream fairly regularly 
you can ask them to help you mod. Okay. So there was two questions. So that I think, so you're talking about platforms. So, so Abe, we, we, uh, we kind of just addressed that. And then, um, Matt's question about monitoring the stuff. Um, do you, so do you do that yourself? Like, are you the one man band on there? Are you doing everything? Mostly. I mean, when I'm on Twitch, I do have people who moderate my comments. So, okay. you know, if there are people that are like trying to post a bunch of links or something like that, or they're just being generally inappropriate, I don't have to take care of that. Okay, cool. Um, but, you know, I do read the comments live as I'm playing. It's all, uh, this is what you're seeing now is not my normal setup. Right. I had to use a different, a different cam to hook up to this one instead of OBS, which is what I usually use. Um, and so, you know, there's a lot that I can see on my screen using OBS and I have, you know, I have my chat up. I'm, I'm, I'm running some tracks sometimes. Sometimes I'm just acoustic. Uh, I'm talking, I'm playing some games. So I'm bringing the games into my feed. And a lot of that I do on my own. There's, there's a big learning curve that comes with OBS. But once you start to get the hang of it, uh, being a one man production studio or one woman production studio isn't that difficult. Okay. Let's let's put a um a bookmark on that thought for because I want to talk about tech a little bit. Sure. Um, OBS Open Broadcast Software. Mm -hmm. It works with Mac and PC. That's correct. And it's free. That's yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. So we'll go we'll go back over that. Um, Patrick would like to know, uh, solo or band? When you I am a solo artist. I just wanted not a solo artist name. My name is uh, Austin James, and I live in Nashville. And it seems like literally every other white dude with a guitar out here has a middle name James. So I just didn't want to go there. I wanted something that had a little mystery and coolness to it, kind of like how um, Chris Caraba is Dashboard Confessional. Cool. Um, I think we talked about this. But how this is important point I think to make. Um, and the answer Patrick is sometimes both, but usually I go tips only because I do this daily and because I do it, you know, I'll run my stream for a few hours at a time because I'm looking at it like a job, you know, just a, a quick little, uh, digression from, from this question. But like, if you are a touring musician, um, you know, let's say I'm in, I'm in Nashville and I got a show in Atlanta. So my sound check in Atlanta is at three o'clock and Atlanta is about three and a half, four hours away, which means my day starts either that morning or the night before when I'm making sure that all of my gear and merch are together and loading that up. Then I'm driving for three and a half, four hours out to Atlanta. I'm doing my sound check. Doesn't take that long. 30, 40 minutes. Great hang out backstage for another three hours till seven, eight, nine. And then I play my 30 to 60 minute set. And then I head back to Nashville, making it a 12 to 13 hour day, you know? And so to say something like, you know, you should broadcast for three, four or five hours, uh, you know, and start, start with, with whatever's comfortable. You know what I mean? Like I've done shows that are 20, 30 minutes. I've done shows like just this Saturday, this past Saturday, I streamed for 600 minutes to celebrate a milestone. I took breaks in between, uh, you know, it wasn't it's all that, you know, and, and so it's like, those things can be really, really fun. It just kind of depends on what you're feeling, what you're capable of, where your stamina is at, what you want to do. Um, but because I do that so often and pretty much daily, I don't really charge for tickets. I find that, um, especially once you get comfortable with your own language for, um, sharing that you want support and that there are opportunities to support you, then you'll find it will come in either because somebody wants to buy that t-shirt or you have a tip jar link up or you have a Patreon link or you have a way to get a subscription. I mean, there are lots and lots of ways to monetize your content without actually charging for the content. Cool. And so Peter, we I think we just touched on this, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Whatever, whatever you feel comfortable with, but you know, I think especially in the beginning, um, you know, it pays to see if you can do two hours a day for 30 days. Cool. Um, where do we find you? 
uh, theslowdrag.com. You can just Google the slow drag, click on whatever link you like. <laughs> and that, that'll take us to like Twitch and the places that you go. Uh, theslowdrag.com slash live, yes. Live, okay. Mm -hmm. And so, hey, Melanie. Hey, Melanie. Thanks for the intro. Melanie is a member of the Well-Paid Musician Club, and um, she is Austin's girlfriend, and she introduced us, so that was very cool of you. So thank you. Thank you. Good intro. <laughs> um, so um, you know anything about this, about playing covers? Uh, well, this is one of those things where the short answer is no, but... <laughs> The longer answer is I've been doing this for three and a half years. I've got no takedown notices. Nobody's coming after me. I'm fairly certain that um, the uh, websites themselves that run these things, they uh, pay some kind of license or something like that. There, there are terms of service agreements that will be broken if you're like streaming something sure. over a... Uh, over your broadcast, like no, no. Yeah. Spotify or something like that. Right. I wouldn't do that. But in terms of just playing, that's what people are doing. Okay. Yeah. I saw recently though, um, Facebook was coming after people, but I think some of that had to do with people playing to tracks. Mm -hmm. Um, I haven't had any issues. I have, I have a cover video on, on Facebook. That's got like a half a million views and it's, it's been fine. That, that's been over four years. Obviously, YouTube has a way to monetize that. To, they have the copyright claim. They put it right on there right away. Um, they pay the, the songwriter. So YouTube is, is kind of got a cleaner process. I don't know about Facebook. I've uh, mm -hmm. just been kind of flying under the radar. Um, they, they are supposed to have an agreement in place. Um, and that, I think, happened in 2018. But again, you know, I'm, I'm no expert on it. I think, you know, Austin feels the same way. Just kind of fly under the radar and do your thing. And yeah, you know. I mean, you're so you're so especially like, you know, someone like myself, I do not have a huge following, you know, and so I kind of lean on that a little bit to do things I know might not be the most ethically sound, but like. Okay, come after me. You know, what's the worst that's going to happen? I'm not going to be able to monetize my YouTube video and yeah, they just take it down. Dollar? Okay, but those agreements are in place. So I mean, that's you know, every time, like even even the last time I did one of these streams, I use this. This is called uh, Streamyard, and I use this to perform. And I'll bring a guest on, and if either one of us does a cover on YouTube, like before the broadcast is done, there's a copyright claim on it. But it's not a violation. It's cool to just know, okay, you, you did a cover song. We're going to make sure that, um, you know, they get paid. The artist gets paid. The songwriter gets paid. So it should be, if the agreement's in place, it should be legit. Um, here we go. We got Eric. What's up, Eric? Let's see. Do you use different streams on Patreon and Twitch? Well, you can't stream on Patreon. Patreon does offer sort of a, a live streaming option for you, but what they do is uh, something like we're doing here. Like you would get a private link to a particular website. I, they use YouTube and something else. I can't remember which. Um, but usually for my Patreon streams, I'll use Facebook. I'll go into a private Facebook group and uh, go live there. Um, but I don't, let me see here. Um, yeah, I don't I don't stream on Patreon and in terms of Twitch, those shows are super long and rarely rigidly planned out. Like, you know, that stream I was talking about earlier where I went for 600 minutes, I was like, "Okay, I'm going to do this for about an hour. I'm going to do that for about an hour." Um I didn't have like every minute planned out to where like on tour, you know, it's like you know your set list. Uh you know, front to back. And it's like, this is how I go into that song. I'm going to end it here. This is where I tell that story. I'm going to take a pause to tune here, blah, blah, blah. Um, the live shows are not like that. They're, they're much more off the cuff and always different, but still familiar. Cool. Okay. So this is a bit of a tech question. Laptop camera. I'm gonna take this yeah. One. I mean, Alyssa, use what you have. Um, uh, again, uh, 
it never hurts to have high production quality. That's very helpful, you know, it's in, especially in terms of making a, uh, a good first impression. Like if your stream looks great and it sounds great, that's awesome. All that being said, if you're nailing your performance, then your phone is fine. You know, use what you have and what you can stream with. I wouldn't recommend streaming on a phone itself as a musician um, for a long, long, long time. But if that's what you have, you can use that. And most, most platforms make it pretty easy to start streaming from your phone. Um, there is a, a country artist um, named Don Beyer uh, who has focused a lot on Facebook and has done some great stuff both in her live streams and outside of her live streams in a, in a more traditional sense. Um, but she streams almost exclusively from her phone. I'm not sure I've ever actually caught one of her live streams where she's been in a studio or she's had something like OBS hooked up with a bunch of mics. She's just playing her songs on Facebook. And granted, the baseline, just like anything else in music, the baseline is that you are a good performer and you're familiar with your instrument and you're able to do what you're trying to do. Um, you know, it's like you can't just go live if you don't know what you're doing in terms of being a musician. But I'm assuming that most people here are practiced musicians that have songs that they can play really well, that have instruments that they can play really well. And that will shine through uh, most quality issues. So that was the long, the long <laughs> answer. To, that's what you can get started with, your phone. I mean, think of it the same way as recording, right? You could spend a million dollars on a record or you could spend, you know, 500 bucks. If the songs are great, that's all that matters, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's another Nashville artist I've been friends with for a while, Ernie Halter. Mm -hmm. He did one of his records in his bathroom, you know, yeah. like back in the day. And it's so really great. And because great voice, great performances, and that's what comes through. So, mm -hmm. you know, think of it that way, Alyssa. Awesome. Um, all right, Gregory. Um, I would recommend, Gregory, whichever uh social media platform you have the most connections on you can go live on facebook you can go live on youtube you can go live on instagram you can go live on twitter those are big ones um that being said if you are just getting started i would really recommend trying what i said to do earlier uh two hours a day for 30 days and maybe do an hour on one platform and an hour on another. Um, now, all all that being said, I mean, and I mean, do two platforms so you can kind of compare and contrast. All that being said, uh, all of these platforms that I just mentioned, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, they do not necessarily have, save maybe YouTube a little bit, but they don't necessarily have a user base that is hungry for live music broadcasts. Inevitably, there will be people that really enjoy that kind of content, but I would consider uh, looking at other broadcasting websites, um, places like Twitch, places like YouNow, um, and there are always new ones popping up uh, to see if there might be one that's a really good fit for you. This is, I mean, this is such a loaded question, Gregory, because I don't know what your music sounds like, I don't know what your general demographic is, but if you know your audience uh, or whatever that is, you know, it's like if your audience is one that you've been building up for years as a musician and you know like, oh, they're generally this demographic and this demographic, then go to where those people are and let them know that's where you are too. If your audience right now is your friends and family and like one or two random people who have seen you play that really enjoy what you're doing, go to wherever you can get in touch with all those people and reach out to them and be like, Hey, this is what we're doing now. Come join me. Cool. So this has come up quite a bit. Um, maybe do you just want to do a quick rundown? Just all name all the available platforms that you stream on. Ooh, all, of, all, all the ones that I can think of off the top of my head, yeah. I'll go for it because I'll, 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 I'll preface this by saying you don't want to spread yourself too thin. 
You know, it's like I do try things out here and there, but in general, I've got one main that I'm using at any given time, and then I'll kind of pop off here and there to a couple other ones. But I have an anchor platform. So um, Stage It is obviously making a huge comeback right now, which I think is a really good option if you don't think you're ready to dive into it every day and you want to try it out. Um, Stage It requires ticket purchases. It doesn't have the best interface, um, but it is tried and true. People understand what it is, which is a, a, a big thing on the internet. Um, and it limits you to about an hour per show. Um, and so you can kind of gauge who might have initial interest in uh, your streams by using something like Stage It. Uh, Twitch and YouTube, huge, huge platforms. Um, Twitch especially um, has a, a growing music section, a growing creative section um, that has not a crazy amount of people, but anywhere between 50 and 100,000 people that are on Twitch that are interested in music, which I think is a big thing. Um, you know, obviously we all know Facebook. Facebook is really good for, I think, getting in touch with the people that uh, are already familiar with your music. I think audience growth comes a little slower on Facebook unless you're doing a lot of other things like advertising and sharing videos and you're really, really active uh, and you're seeing growth from those endeavors. Uh, those are the people you want to pull into your broadcasts. Um, Periscope, I've used a couple of times uh, and it's okay. Uh, it's, it's really easy to set up and uh not as not as easy to monetize um but again it's it's one that's kind of popular and people understand what it is uh what have i said instagram's doing its thing uh instagram is fun again like facebook for staying in touch with the people who already know who you are um and so uh instagram in my experience has been the hardest to monetize so I would use Instagram for things like, uh, you know, an occasional show, or if you've got something that's super planned out, like here's a tight 30 minutes that I know I'm going to play these songs in this way and then interact with people in between, but don't expect to, uh, to make a lot of money unless you're doing something like, hey, I've got a CD that you can get in my bio, or I've got some merch or sign up for this thing or whatever. Um, but in terms of uh, like putting in a tip jar or something on Instagram. I don't know how to do it. Uh, I don't know how to do it in a way where I can keep watching the broadcast and support somebody. Um, I would have to leave and go to their profile, open their link tree or their, their whatever they've got there, and then go back to the broadcast. And that's why these, um, these platforms like Twitch and you now, uh, there was one called Buster. It's dead. A lot of them, a lot of them die. Um, the new ones, but consider whether or not the streaming platform you're looking at has some kind of built in monetization. Um, let me think, have I, uh, I saw, I saw Jenna in the audience. Am I forgetting any, any other platforms that I've, that I've tried out? You, you now, uh, you now, you now was the one that I started on because it was heavily featured in, uh, Ari Herstan's article. Okay. And I've, I've left you now mostly because, um, I wanted to move to a bigger platform. Uh, you now is pretty small, pretty tight knit community, but I will say uh, without going too far into it, that that is an essential part of broadcasting. Consider yourself um, a new musician in a new town. You've just moved somewhere and you want to, uh, you want to um, get to know the scene. You have to go out, you have to see who's playing, you have to see who you think's good, uh, you have to see where the places are that have the vibes and plug yourself into that community. Same thing goes with broadcasting. Like, you know, no musician is an island. You do have to uh, network for people. Yes, Chris, I agree with that. You, you, I had a hard time getting some good sound in you now, and people had to fight for it uh, to even get some kind of an improvement. Uh, Peter. Are they regional? Uh, you know, whoever is up and awake and wanting to watch whenever you're doing it, uh, Peter, that's uh, that's who will watch. Uh, you know what I mean? It's like if you changed your time to make it better for the East Coast, you'd be missing people somewhere else. I wouldn't worry too much about that. It's much more important that you uh, 
go live when you have some energy and you you're feeling good if it works well for you to just go live at 3 p.m whenever whenever your time zone is every day uh that's when it works for you you know and those people who can watch live will watch live you know it's like if i changed my broadcasting schedule or my broadcast time for everybody in like europe or asia who's popped into a show here and there um they're like oh i have such a hard time watching your show it's like well bummer <laughs> watch the replay and catch it when you can i'm always glad when you can be there but i understand that not everybody can be there all the time so do what do what's yeah. best for you and what will help you put on the best show that's a great point i have uh, a fan in germany that tunes in while well, she watches the replay every mm -hmm. broadcast that mm -hmm. I do. and we did one earlier uh like at 4 p.m a couple weeks ago and she was actually on it live but usually it's like l way too late but she every single one because she wants to see it so right and i should point out that like it might seem obvious but you don't have to go live at the same time every day it really helps to have consistency but uh if you go live at 11 o'clock on mondays and three o'clock on tuesdays and 11 o'clock on wednesdays and five o'clock on thursdays and that's generally what you do then people will get hit to that and that gives you an opportunity to play to these other uh, time zones. It's a good segue to this question. Uh, I generally just stream uh, on Twitch daily. And when I feel like it, every now and then, I'll, I'll pop onto Facebook. I'll pop onto Instagram. Um, I haven't really gotten into YouTube. Um, but those, those two platforms, I'd say if I'm not on Twitch, which is my main one right now, um, uh, I, I won't, I won't do daily on other platforms. It's just kind it's kind of a lot. Okay. Do you ever have sponsors? Uh, you know, I would love to have sponsors, but I don't, uh, I don't have a huge fan base. I'm not a, a, a very attractive sponsorship. Um, uh, what am I trying to say? Candidate. Uh, but that being said, like, you know, I would be open to it. It's also not something that I've tried to hunt out, but you know, if you are in touch with, uh, you know, you, you're seeing it right now, you're seeing right now, so many musicians on all different kinds of levels doing different live stream things. And it really is quite an equalizer because, mm -hmm. you know, you can, you can find incredible performers on the internet, just like you can find incredible performers in real life. And you can find a lot of famous people who aren't as talented as some of these nobodies on YouTube, Twitch, Facebook, or whatever. Um, and so if you can do this kind of like is calling back to earlier when I was talking about how, you know, uh, streaming can be a great part of your total income stream. Um, because, you know, Maddie, if you've got the, the connections to businesses and artists, there's no reason to not try to put together a sponsored show and get it out there as best you can, you know? Yeah. I, I tune in, there's a, a Facebook live that I tune into on Friday mornings and, um, the guy got a, a coffee retailer to sponsor but I mean, it's like this. We have like 37 people on right now. That's usually what it is on Friday mornings. It's not a ton mm -hmm. of people, but you know, he he found a sponsor, so mm -hmm. worth a shot. I don't I don't know what what they pay. Uh, obviously, it would, it's going to be more with the size of your audience, but yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know, a situation like that, uh, they may not be paying him anything at all. You know, uh, there are coffee sponsorships out there where it's like <laughs> a bag of coffee and you. Yeah and buy it at a wholesale price yeah. and resell it to your audience. Um, and I think those are, those are the kinds of sponsorship opportunities that would be available to me in general, which is why I don't really hunt them down. Mm -hmm. If someone comes out and they say, Hey, I want to try to team up. That's cool. Cool. All right. Um, I think we touched on this a little bit. Eric's question about your audience. So, Eric, uh, for audience growth, I would definitely consider whether or not the platform you're using has a built-in audience of people who want to uh, 
um, watch what you're doing. You know, it, it, uh, you'll have a slower time growing if you depend solely on the platform's audience. But uh, in general, the, the, the answer to that, Eric, is just consistency. Um, keep going live, keep having a good time going live and try to go live, uh, you know, it, every day, most days, generally at the same time. Oh yeah, sure. Uh, sure, Matt. Um, I'll do that from here on out. I'm just trying to move down here. Um, so Patrick, we, we mentioned this. If you go to the slow drag.com slash live, mm -hmm. right? That's where you're going to be. Do you have to watch the streams live or are they recorded and can be watched at a time that is convenient for a follower? And in general, the answer is yes, across platforms. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like this. Um, it's just not obviously interactive, but a lot of people will be watching these replays like that we're doing right now. And uh tip money can come in right after the fact. That's true. Yes. Yeah. If you, especially, I saw this, especially on Facebook, um, because, you know, when I would do a Facebook stream and still when I do Facebook streams, which is a little more rare now, but you know, I'll have my PayPal link in there and make sure to say, uh, at the beginning and end of the stream, like, hey, if you're enjoying this or you're watching the replay, that tip jar is always live and I uh, appreciate you supporting independent musicians. If you can do so, um, thank you, you know, and you might see some uh, <laughs> some tips coming in uh, when you're not live, which is nice. Ah, Dave says, my internet upload speed ranges from one to two megabits per second. What do I need internet-wise to make my laptop work instead of using my phone? That's going to be uh, an issue for you, Dave. You're going to want at least three consistently, like three and up. Like, you know, I'm fairly lucky now to live in an area where I have Google Fiber. So, like, my upload speeds are like 60, 70 or something like that. But... Um, before that, uh, I had Comcast and I do believe I was using the blast internet that they had, uh, over Wi-Fi, which meant in general, I was, you know, somewhere between, uh, 12 to 30 megabits per second upload speed. Um, but yeah, you're, you, you, one to two is going to cause problems. Um, so in order to, uh, in order you, you want at least three and that's, at the very least, you know, and yeah, and make sure it's not Wi Fi plug in directly if you can. That's it's mm -hmm. gonna make a difference. Yeah. Use the Ethernet connection. Um all right, cool. Abe. But I will you can also you should be able to find uh some information. Like a lot of these things, guys, uh, you know, listen to what I'm saying, but also Google your questions, triangulate your information. GTS. Yes. Google that shit. Yeah. <laughs> That's how I find most of yeah. the answers to the questions I have about all of this. You know, I'm, I'm a musician first and foremost. And over the last few years, I've been learning about streaming. Uh, Abraham wants to know, how did you bridge or grow your following from your social media into people who uh, are in your Twitch streams? Is Twitch a good place to grow outside who already knows you? Um, uh, well, it's, it's been very grassroots for me, uh, Abraham. Um, like I said, I don't have a huge following. Um, and so things that I have done are individually reach out to people on Facebook with a message or a friend request and be like, Hey, I'm making music and you have liked music I've made in the past. Check it out. Um, consistency again, uh, I'll say it over and over consistency again, just showing your face on the platforms, uh, so people can, uh, recognize it and then realize that they know you from the content and have enjoyed themselves. Um, they'll come back, but again, uh, growth on a platform like Twitch, which is very, very big can come slow. If all you're doing is things on Twitch, you know? Um, I have, I have buddies who, uh, haven't been as fortunate as I have, uh, in terms of getting out on the road and making face-to-face -face connections with people. And all that that I did was over a decade ago. It was a different lifetime, you know, but 
some of these people, they, they will stick with you and you can keep making music with them and for them. Um, and so in order to grow your audience online, you just need to grow your audience uh, and bring them into Twitch. That's the most effective way to do it. Because if you're online and you're live and you're broadcasting on Twitch, um, people will come into your broadcast here and there. Some days better than others. Some days not at all. Um, but if you're also, you know, occasionally putting out music and posting videos and sharing things on social media and playing the occasional live show or whatever and letting people know that this is something that you do, sending out your email blasts, all of that, um, it all it all feeds back in. Very good point. Um, Jenna's making some some good comments too. Reddit. Yeah, yeah. Jenna, Jenna, she's 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 remembering a lot of these platforms that I've been live on. Jenna has been very helpful. Uh, she's she's one of my mods and helps me also with some back and stuff. Mm -hmm. Very cool. And Reddit, honestly, Reddit is a lot of fun right now. Yeah. Uh, impossible to monetize. Uh, <laughs> the culture there is uh, they're a little against self promotion, sure. but. You know, I, I did I did Reddit um, four or five times last week. They they limit you to a one hour session. So I just was like, okay, I'm gonna wake up and drink some coffee and go live on Reddit, and it's really fun. And I've told people like, hey, I'm live on Twitch. And to your point, uh, let's see, uh, wait, somebody was asking about growth on Twitch. I've gotten more followers from doing these uh, Reddit broadcasts than I have just from native on Twitch. Oh, wow. Um, which is really, really cool. Can I ask you a question then? Um, I'm going to button line here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so can we talk about the culture of the different platforms? Um, so, you know, I heard you say like Instagram, very hard to monetize, Reddit, very hard to monetize. Um, but then you were able to bring people from Reddit over to Twitch. So mm -hmm. um, where is the best, what are the best platforms where people are like they're willing and able to tip? And, and um, most platforms that have some sort of built in monetization are okay. like that. Now, that being said, uh, this is where learning to use something like OBS in combination with a website called Streamlabs. There are other ones like there, uh, like Streamlabs out there. Stream Elements okay. is another one. But, um, Basically, you just want as many opportunities as you can give your audience to support you. Um, and so you now and Twitch are two sites that I've used that had the built-in monetization. Um, if you are using the in-website currency, you're going to see uh, less money per dollar spent go into your pocket. Because in general, um, these are considered mobile purchases by Apple and Android. So if you go onto Twitch, you go onto YouNow, and you buy $50 worth of their currency, then you're actually only going to be able to give about $20 to $25 to a broadcaster. Um, so it's like you spend $1 on YouNow, you spend $1 on Twitch to buy you know, you now to buy bars, Twitch to buy bits, they all have their different names. Um, but 30% off the top goes to the app store. And then in general, the artist uh, and the uh, platform split the remaining 50% or split the, split the remaining 70% 50-50. So you're getting about 35 to 40% of every dollar spent. Mm -hmm. So if you're using a tip jar link, your Venmo, your Cash App, your PayPal, whatever, um, then you know that if someone is using that, then 100% minus whatever fees are associated with that app go right to you. Um, and so it's important to consider whether or not you can set something like that up, uh, whether or not you want to right away. Um, because again, um, especially in the beginning, focusing on the people who are there and showing up, making sure that they're having a good time, making sure that people want to come back is paramount um you know it's like you might i have days i have days yesterday um i went live for like two and a half hours and some of my biggest supporters weren't there and i made like 
25 bucks, 30 bucks or something like that, which is like, you know, thank God I waited tables for years because I know that like some nights you're going to get stiffed. Some nights, some nights you're just going to have some shitty customers. And then the next night somebody could come in and tip you 200%. You know, it's really, again, just about showing up, being there mm -hmm. and uh, making sure that people are having a good time. Totally. Jenna makes a good point though. The main benefit Jenna says the in-app currency is often easier and more exciting for viewers to use. You know, until you're a master at OBS, um, the the uh, the things inside websites, like she's saying, the in-app currencies, they'll have their own built-in animations and uh, loyalty rewards and leaderboards and things like that that are that kind of gamify spending money. That is a lot more difficult to do if you're using a platform like. YouTube or Facebook or Instagram, but these like broadcasting websites that are built for broadcasting, uh, you know, Mixer is one that I haven't used, but I kind of keep my eye on it. They all have their little things, sparks, bits, uh, bars, whatever. Um, and so spending money on those in a broadcast is a lot more fun. Not only are you supporting your broadcaster, but you can see your name on the screen that pops up with all these animations and you can check after the broadcast to see like, Ooh, I was the person that gave the most support. And that's really cool. You know, it's like these, these little things that sort of, uh, <clears throat> they're sort of like a, uh, they're, they're, they're an operating cost. You can look at it, you know, uh, like, okay, I don't mind, um, you know, giving this platform, another 30 cents on the dollar that I make because not only have they built out so much of this back end, but they make it really fun for the audience to be here and spend something and uh, feel like feel like they're getting something fun for the money that they're spending. Yeah, they've, they've worked out that uh, gamify psychology to get people mm -hmm. to spend. So they're incentivizing yeah. them to do it. So, you know, you're it's why you're paying a fee for that service. So mm -hmm. that's a good point. Um, okay. You, you mentioned, and we've mentioned OBS a bunch of times. Do you want to talk a little bit more about that? What is it? What is it? Um, man, it's, it's a, it's a monster is what it is. I hate it. I hate it. And I love it. Um, so OBS open broadcasting software. This is something that I got into uh, after a few months of streaming because I wanted to, increase the uh, the quality of my streams uh, when I was live, uh, especially as a musician. Um, and so it's like, I, I already have great recording gear at home. Um, I've got good mics and I've, I, I, I'm familiar with Pro Tools. So it's like, I want that experience to go into my users' ears. And OBS is a great way to get started with that huge, huge learning curve. Um, I'm not going to be giving an OBS tutorial, but <laughs> yeah. lots of information out there, especially if you know exactly what you need to do. You know, if you're asking Google the question that you would be asking me, chances are you can find the answer to it. But basically what OBS does is it collects your camera sources, um, you know, your webcam, your, your phone. Well, you can use your phone as, as a camera in OBS, but whatever you got, um, uh, it should work with Facebook. Chuck. Uh, and it takes you, we are using the same mic. Yeah. Uh huh. This is a great mic. The, uh, the S and um, really good for vocals, really good for broadcasting, really good for podcasting. I also, I keep my, um, you can't really see it. Let me just bring it. Oh, come on. I keep my AKG room mic just sort of, it's muted right now, but when I'm broadcasting, I do have this guy just sort of in the background to pick up the whole room um, in case, especially I need to be loud and blah, 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 blah. But sorry, OBS, open broadcasting software. We got a link for it right there. It won't let me post it in um, uh, YouTube. So it's just obsproject.com. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can go, you can go there. You, there are different versions of it. It's open source. So if you're a programmer, wow, you can do a lot with it. I, I'm not, mm -hmm. but, um, that will make it so you can collect your, uh, your video and any good audio and send that out into a broadcast. You know, it's like if you opened your, 
uh, computer or your laptop right now, uh, and you just decided to go live, you know, you'd be using your laptop or your computer microphone and your laptop or your computer uh, uh, camera. Same thing with your phone, you know. So if you want something, if you want something uh, more advanced than that, then you you want to familiar familiarize yourself with OBS. And what's great about OBS is, God, I wish that I could be using it right now so I could show yeah. you guys yeah. what I'm talking about. But like when I'm live on Twitch. Um, I use OBS to talk to a website that has a list of songs I know how to play. And so people are watching Twitch. They'll type in the chat, I want to hear this song using a, sp uh, a specific command. Uh, and that song, that, that, that chat will talk to this website and then reflect back into OBS. So it's like, you know, they'll be like, I want to hear Mary Had a Little Lamb. And then all of a sudden you'll see up here, boop, this person has requested Mary Had a Little Lamb. Um, so there are those kinds of things that you can do. You can play your iTunes and things like that through your, uh, you're like, hey guys, check out this new song I, I just recorded. I'm so excited to share it with you guys before it goes on to Spotify. Listen to it. You know, you can do stuff like that. A lot of higher production value comes through OBS. And yep. what's great is once you have all these things put together, like you guys have seen broadcasters with like their logo down in the corner or like a flashing message or something like that or some kind of scrolling, whatever. I would say OBS, XSplit, ManyCam, those are the three off the top of my head that are fairly similar. I've always used OBS and I love it. It works really well. But what's great is you can set all that stuff up Keep your setup as it is. I want my camera here. I want this particular sound. I need these effects. I need this logo here. And you can send that to any different website. You know, you don't have to reset it up. You don't have to change it per website. Um, meaning like if I have my Twitch set up and I do a broadcast on Twitch, all I need to do is change my stream key in OBS so it's sending information to Facebook. And then I've got that same setup on Facebook. Same thing with YouTube, all these things. And it'll allow you to use um, a DAW, right? So like yes, yes. Gregory that, cool. that uh, interface. For what it's worth, if you want to get into this, OBS is free, but for using my DAW, yeah. uh, I have always used a program called Loopback. Um, one word, Loop. For Mac, that's for Mac. Uh, I don't know if it's not for Windows, but yes, I, I do use a Mac and I always have. I think it is. I th and there's something else. Soundflower is another one. Yeah. Yeah. Those, those uh, are Mac a couple of my Mac friends have had trouble with Soundflower. I couldn't get it to work, but Loopback and Soundflower are the final piece to that puzzle. OBS uh, helps you get great quality, helps you control your quality if you need to, you know, like someone was talking earlier about not having a high... Um, upload speed. You could adjust your quality so your stream doesn't crash if you've got a low up, uh, upload speed. And if you've got maximum, you can go max quality. But getting your DAW into the stream requires some sort of sound aggregation program. And so Soundflower and Loopback are the two most popular for that. Um, I use Loopback and what it does is it takes, it takes programs from my computer um, right now, I've got like Chrome, Spotify, iTunes, Pro Tools, Logic, uh, QuickTime, and a couple other programs um, that are all running their output through Loopback. And then Loopback is my audio source. The same way like if you go live and you're like, oh, I'm going to choose this microphone, I choose Loopback. And that way, I get the full quality from my DAW. If I want to play a song real quick uh, from my iTunes, I can do that. Uh, if I have a game like a Jackbox game or something like that, then everybody can hear that full quality through the stream, no problem. So OBS and Loopback or Soundflower are really good things to look into if you want to up your game. And then, uh, so I added that link for Loopback, and this is for PC because I looked into this before. You, you can use something called uh, Voice Meter Banana, and there's a link right there too. <laughs> um, yeah, so find what works for you. You know what I mean? I, I I knew that I was into doing this uh, full time, and so the one hundred dollar price tag for something like Loopback was like, this is an investment. You know what I mean? It's like if I got a new guitar, I'd want to go get some strings and a strap and like you know whatever else I need to make this guitar work. 
<laughs> some cables right. and stuff like that too. It's just yeah. like you gotta you gotta spend some money. Totally. Um, I just wanted to address this real quick. We asked about the interface. Do you have any recommendations or? No, you know, a lot of people get by with like a, you know, a focus, right. Two I two, you know, just two ins, two outs. Um, for the longest time, uh, I had, uh, two ins and outs. Uh, I was using a focus, right. I can't remember the exact model and I just upped it to, um, uh, an 18 I eight. So I've got more inputs. And if I need more inputs than I have on my actual interface, I have a mixer. Uh, and a lot of people choose to do that, yeah. uh, Gregory, I think, especially if you are a, uh, bass player, but if you're, you know, if, if you're going live and you're playing bass, like, uh, I see a couple people doing this on Twitch and other places mm -hmm. say, uh, you know, your what you're gonna do is set up your broadcast to, uh, you know, play famous bass lines based on song requests. You would need um, OBS and loopback for that. And what you would do is you would set up your DAW to run through loopback, and you'd set up your browser to run through loopback. And that way, everybody could hear the YouTube video or whatever that you're playing along with. Um, and uh, it's at the quality that you're hearing it out of your DAW. I think the interface matters a lot less than the DAW that you're using and what you do in that DAW before you send it to Loopback or Soundflower, then through OBS. Um, and then another way to do it is I prefer um, using my mixer because mm -hmm. I run one channel to my monitor mm -hmm. and then I, I feel like it's a live gig. And then what I hear in the monitor with the reverb and everything is what the audience hears. Right. And, and oftentimes when I'm streaming, I'm using these big old cans. Yeah. Right yeah. now I'm just listening to you talk and I don't need to hear a lot of nuance. I can hear your voice just fine. Um, but yeah, I wear these big bad boys when, uh, when I'm streaming. Sure. Mm -hmm. So, and then, I mean, most mixers have like, the USB mm -hmm. right, right there. So just right into your computer. So it's not, mm -hmm. yeah, it's pretty simple. Um, oh yeah. I hadn't really considered that. Yeah, because I've always used my DAW. But if you don't have a DAW, if you don't have an interface and you do have a USB out, many, many people use their mixers with great success. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Um, Alyssa was asking about this, and I don't think it's possible, but... Um, oh, band... So not, not playing together that I know of, right? Um, mm -hmm. Because... The, the bandwidth just isn't there to, to be able to play in time with another person mm -hmm. like we're doing. That's not, that's not a thing yet. Is it? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> if you've got, if you've got some serious equipment and you've got some serious programs and technical know-how, um, you can get that latency low, but, uh, I have not seen a successful band playing together from different places. The closest I've seen to something like that is you've got two streamers playing together. This streamer is running this streamer's broadcast through their stream. Mm -hmm. And so this person starts playing, and one, two, three seconds later, this person starts to hear what they're playing and plays along. And so because this person is sending out their audio and the audio that they're hearing from this person playing, you hear only one sound source and you hear somebody jamming over somebody else, but uh, they wouldn't be able to switch it, you know? Uh, so yeah, you could do a writer's round kind of thing. Um, if you have a computer that can handle hosting multiple um, broadcasts, but in terms of collaborating without being in the same room, playing the same song at the same time, uh, the the consumer technology for that just really isn't there. Cool. Um, so Chris, um, right now I'm just using my laptop computer or, or uh, camera, but when I do my performances, I use my digital camera. I use my Canon Rebel, and I have a, a really good lens for that. So um, I feel like the actually I've got a lot of comments of people tell me that the video quality is really, really nice. So um, what do you use when you do your live stream performances, Austin? 
Man, I almost feel like just seeing if my webcam camera is better than this. What I have hooked up right now is um, a Logitech C922. Uh, and when I signed on to this website, they made me limit my quality. Um, and it looks real fuzzy to me. Uh, but hold on, let me just see something real quick. Let me see what happens when I switch to my to my 2013 iMac um, camera and see what this looks like. It'll be a totally different angle too. Uh, you guys will probably see a little bit of my mess. Um, I'm not wearing pants, so don't worry about it. This, okay, so this is my, um, this is my computer, my actual computer cam, which actually looks a little sharper, uh, which is great. So when I'm streaming, uh, I'll either use the Logitech, which generally looks pretty good, or I'll hook up my iPhone. I just got a DSLR uh, to start using for streaming, but I still need a couple of uh, cable components to hook it up and make sure that it doesn't die while I'm streaming. Um, but you know, as long as as long as it's not terrible, then uh, I wouldn't worry about it. Use what you got. Cool. Um. Online festivals. Maddie's, uh, Maddie's asking, have you ever been a part of any online festivals? I would like to create some. Do you find this has helped expand your fan base by joining with others? I have not. Uh, when, when all this hit, Maddie, uh, I was feeling very lucky that I could step back and see what was happening, especially with a lot of my friends who uh, are doing the traditional route. Um, and so far, I haven't seen a whole lot of online festivals that I'd really like to be a part of. And I'm also happy to let people kind of do that thing um, and sort of play occasionally and be a part of it uh, as they want to. I'm happy to just keep doing my thing as I'm doing it. That being said, like, you know, a couple of people have reached out to me. If I can do something, then I will. Um, and so what has come from the particular, uh, situation we're all in, where a lot of people are streaming are more smaller private concerts. Um, because I, looking around, I see a lot of disorganization on smaller, uh, smaller festivals. And what mostly I'm seeing with the DIY festivals is, um, a schedule of events, but not a lot of, um, not a lot of, uh, what am I trying to say? Collaboration between the artists who are performing, if that makes sense. It's just sort of like, here's a list of people that are going live, but no incentive for anybody to watch all of them. Right. You know, and especially, which is especially difficult because a lot of these are and should be free to watch and then you can support uh, as you're watching. But collaboration never hurts anybody. <laughs> um, John's asking, what about just posting a Venmo address at the bottom of your stream? Um, well, usually what I do, John, when I'm setting up my stream on Facebook is you're given an opportunity to, uh, you know, make a post that you see above the actual broadcast, like, hey, I'm live, and if you put your link there, it's always there. Mm -hmm. And when you go live, if you comment your link, you can pin it as well. So it's always there. Um, and if you're planning on going live for a while, mention it a couple of times in your broadcast. Uh, be like, you know, hey, you know, I'm an independent musician and I know these things are free to watch, but your support goes a long way or whatever feels comfortable for you to say. Um, and just mention it a couple of times. It, just having it there is important talking about it a little bit and feeling comfortable talking about it is important. Um, and the simplest way is just, yeah, put your link either in the description or in a pinned comment. Pinned comment. That's a good idea. Didn't think of that. I think, I think also that making it clickable is important too. Um, mm -hmm. which is why, uh, you might want it in the description. I can't remember. Um, I can't remember I, I, which you can, uh, Facebook mobile, you can't click some links somewhere. And I think it's in the comments. 
Um, so you might want to if consider your mobile audience and make sure that you have a link somewhere where a link is clickable. One second. Cool. Sonia, um, yes, this is going to live on the YouTube channel and it's going to live on the Facebook page so people can uh, watch the replay. Let's see. Uh, Patrick, yeah, we, we actually think we talked about this earlier. Um, Ari's Take, I think it's Ari's Take.com. It's Ari Herstand, um, blogger, and he um, sent out this email years ago where um the people some of the people you mentioned right was um streaming that you follow their model so so ari had mentioned some people right mm -hmm. and that gave you the inspiration austin to start and then um you you also mentioned dawn buyer mm -hmm. and so uh, to that point whichever platform you decide you want to use um see if you can find some other streamers. See if you can find some streamers that are just starting out. See if you can find some streamers that had, uh, you know, a little time under their belts and see if you can find some of the most popular streamers. Um, and especially if you're thinking of really diving into this, Twitch is an awesome place to look for that. Um, but uh, I think, you know, Eddie, I think he might have updated that article recently and included Dawn. Um, but, uh, Yes, I'm always looking at what other streamers are doing. Um, you never know who's got a great idea or a great uh, design, or maybe they're just playing a song that I hadn't thought to play. Any anything, um, anything that you can uh, use to improve your stream by watching other streamers uh, will co will come into play. You you definitely want to see what other people are doing. Totally, especially if like you're not. I, I, you know, like I said before, I'm a musician first and not a broadcaster. I'm learning to broadcast. Some people like this comes very naturally to them and uh, they've got some great ideas and there's nothing wrong with ripping off somebody else's good. <laughs> idea. Um, See, Rick, mm -hmm. how do you interface a Canon camera with a PC to use it for live stream? So um, I'm using a Mac. So what I do is I go out of the Canon uh, USB into my computer. And then I, for the Mac, I use two pieces of software. It's a camera live is one. And then either OBS, um, if I'm going to Facebook or, uh, when I'm doing this Streamyard thing, I use something called cam twist. So you just have to got to Google, you got to GTS that, um, but, uh, USB, um, to your, cause it's not the only way, the way I'm doing it just works with my setup. Um, more than one way to skin a cat, right? So Google it but USB um, to the computer from the camera is the way to go. Um, Eric wants to know, how do you promote your shows, Austin? Uh, I've gone through various levels of promotion over the years. Um, so sometimes not at all. Sometimes I'm just like, I'm just going live. This is what I'm doing. Most people know. And then I'll throw something out there every now and then if I'm doing something special. Um, because because I am doing them every day and I don't have like a strict layout for my shows, uh, if there's something really special that I want people to be a part of, then I'll, you know, I'll toss out an email and I'll make sure to post a couple times on social media. Um, and I also, this is a, this is a really good thing to do, whether or not you're a streamer, uh, have something like a private Facebook group, have something like a Slack or a Discord or something where everybody who's interested in your music and the community that you're building around your music can connect with one another. Um, because honestly, like, like I said before, it's slow going for a lot of people. Um, so if you don't have some kind of like viral thing or you don't have like a, an already big fan base, then, um, you know, getting, getting new people to roll up just takes a lot of time. So talking about it like you're talking about anything else, just like make regular posts about it on Facebook. Be like, hey, I'm doing a stream or my stream was fun or, you know, what are you guys, are you guys into this? What are you watching? That kind of a thing. Just talk about it, you know, because it's so much, it's, it's not about the big event every day. It's about a cool hang every day and occasional big events. Um, this is a good comment from Jenna. 
from the viewer's perspective. Mm -hmm. uh, I think she's talking about the, the tip, the Venmo mm -hmm. links and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, and again, like consistent reminders, Twitch has been the best for stuff like this. You know, um, I can, I can say like, I can be broadcasting on Twitch, uh, and be like, Hey guys, can I get a tip jar link in the chat? And somebody will enter the command and it'll pop right up. Um, somebody will be like, Hey, how do I, you know, like I, uh, I do this every now and then here's my very first one. Um, as a tip incentive was, Hey, if you tip me, then I'll write your name on my guitar. Sorry, the lighting in here is so shitty. Um, but you know, it's like, so now I've got all these names all over my guitar. Uh, and I've started doing that again. And so like people will ask too, like, Oh, how do I support you? How do I get that shirt? How do I get that song? Um, what's your tip jar link or, you know, how do I get my name written on the wall behind you or on this thing? You know, like these are fun, small things you can do with your community that might seem a little goofy, uh, if you're used to only the traditional route of playing music. But again, it's about, it's about hanging. It's about building this community of people who really like what you're doing. You know, once they, once they're in on it, then it's like, just having those those uh, those monetization sources available uh, at the ready um, means that people will use them. And I think um, that was my biggest takeaway. So Austin and I chatted before we went live today. We, we chatted um, like a week or so ago. And my biggest takeaway was that it's not necessarily about the show. It's about the hang when you're talking about live streaming. And um, that made a lot of sense to me because... I mean, you can't replicate face to face, but um, you can still connect with people. And that's why they're coming. They're coming for the connection. They're coming for, um, you know, the shout out. They're coming for uh, the comments to their friends. And, you know, so um, that for me, that was the most eye opening thing about this. And now when I'm doing my streams, I'm making sure that I'm slowing down, meaning like I'm taking more time in between songs to address every comment and really make sure that people are being acknowledged and I'm not just playing to the wall, you know, like I'm, mm -hmm. I want everyone to know that I'm grateful that they're there. Um, I'm listening to what they're, they're saying. And, um, it's yeah. super important. And honestly, it's funny, you know, I mentioned earlier, uh, that like, Oh, I see all these people saying things in the chat and I feel compelled to talk to them. It's been really weird. I mean, granted, when you're talking to somebody like this and there's two people on screen and you're having a conversation, that's where everybody's focus is really. But like, you know, I'm looking over here and I'm like, what's up, John Berman? What's up, Jenna? What's up, Matt Broder? Like, Eddie, hey, what's going on? Patrick, thanks so much for hanging. Like, if I'm not wrong, that string of names that I just shouted out to say, hey, to you guys to recognize that you're here and appreciate that you're here. Like, you felt a little something, I'm hoping. We felt excited that like, oh, hey, there's, I'm being included. And that's like the way that you can include your audience when you're live streaming is really different uh, than uh, live shows. You know what I mean? It's like when I'm playing a song and somebody pops in and they're like, hey, what's up, Austin? How's it going? I'll be like, sing, sing, sing. Oh, hey, what's up? How's it going? Back to the singing. You know, it's like you're not going to do that uh, in a live show most of the time. So Jenna's saying that uh, you acknowledge everybody that comes into the room. It's a really valuable, important part of the experience. So from the viewer's perspective, um, yeah. So the, I got to get better at that, Austin. I'm I'm gonna uh, I'm taking notes. So I mean, and just think about think about how many broadcasts you've seen where you know maybe you'll pop in and you don't say anything, and the broadcaster doesn't say anything. But if you go in and you're like hello, and the broadcaster doesn't say anything and nobody in the audience says anything, or you go in and you're like, hello, and you drop a tip and nobody says anything, that sucks. It doesn't yeah. make you feel good. <laughs> um, and that's what, that's what really what broadcasting is all about. Like I said before, baseline musician broadcaster shit is like you know how to play your instrument, you know how to play songs, you know how to sing. Like that's the basics. People expect that. But, um, you know, if you're making people feel good about watching that content, because people can go to your YouTube, they can watch play a video. They don't have they don't have to do that live. The exactly. live gives you an opportunity to connect with people and gives you an opportunity to let them know that you're glad that they're there. Mm -hmm. Because especially on the internet, especially video content, 
there are billions, if not trillions of videos on the internet that anybody could be watching at any given time. But right now, they're here watching you. True. Like you guys watching us. Hey, thanks, guys. <laughs> So um, I think, you know, we're going to wrap this up. We've been at this for an hour and 37 minutes. Well, actually, no, it hasn't been that long because I was pre-rolling the screen. So probably about an hour and a half we've been on or so. Um, I want to thank Austin again. Guys, everybody thank Austin. This is uh, amazing. And I really appreciate the fact that, you know, you could be making some money right now on Twitch. Instead, you're you're helping people figure this whole streaming game out. So I I really appreciate it. I know everyone else does too. So. Drop a comment. Make make Austin feel special. <laughs> and thanks, Matt. I I really do like being able to do this. Uh, I'm I, I'm really excited to see uh, a lot of my friends, especially now, start to get into streaming. And super cool when I see it start to click with them. If you know when all of this uh, crazy COVID stuff boils over and we're back to quote unquote normal. You know, I do think that a lot of people are going to pick up the pieces and start booking shows again and getting out on the road and blah, 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 blah. But like, you know, if you can keep this up and make it a part of what you're doing regularly, your fans will love you for it. The people that you connect with on the road, they will come watch you and want to support you uh, on the Internet. So it's it's just a good tool to have under your belt regardless. Yeah, that's I'm I'm committed to continue to do this. Um mm -hmm. you know, and uh, I'm I'm loving it cuz right now I'm reconnecting with my own music. I've for mm -hmm. such a long time been making a living playing other people's music, you know, and it it's been a good living. I support my family, but I can't do that right now. So while I'm streaming, I'm reconnecting with my audience. And I'm playing my own music every week. It just feels amazing. Like I'm just, mm -hmm. it's just I'm I don't want to stop. So when I go back to doing the other thing, I I'm still going to make sure at least once a week I'm I'm putting on my live stream show. I'm connecting with my fans again, and yeah. So, um, so you see all the love you're getting here, Austin. Everybody's really <laughs> guys, appreciative. You guys are awesome. <laughs> and you can find me. Just look for the slow drag, uh, the slow drag .com. Um, you can sign up to my email list there. I'd say I'm most active on Twitter. Um, although you know I've been taking a huge social media break for my own mental health, which I recommend everybody do, you know, I'm feeling it start to come back a little more, but if you have questions about the things we've discussed today, uh, you can feel free to shoot me an email or, uh, find me on Twitter or something like that. If you got something specific, um, love talking about it. Love. Where helping. can we follow you? What's the best place? So uh, I'd say Twitter right now is the best place to follow. Um, okay, Jenna put up the slow drag.com. Yeah. And or slow drag uh, everywhere else. Yeah. Okay. Slow drag. And, and guys, if you're um, enjoying this content, just give me a follow here, whether you're on Facebook or whether you're on YouTube, um, you know, that, that would be very helpful. Appreciate it. And um, here's Jenna's posting your email there, the slow drag at the slow drag .com If you have questions and you guys can hit me up as well too. Uh, I'm not the expert on streaming, but uh, I am the expert on finding uh High paying private event gigs on a on a consistent basis. That's what I help uh, the members of our group do. Right now, I've just paused that whole thing. I'm not selling the course right now because you know the demand obviously is not there. Um, the, people are still requesting. I'm still getting leads, but it, ordinarily this time of year would be amazing, um, and it will be amazing again. It'll we'll come back. Um, I got some really good news today this morning. I um, I book and produce a concert series here in Philadelphia. Um, they're not canceling. They're just pushing it, but the start date's going to start it after July 4th. So we've still got two months. We're, we're going to be, we're gonna be doing that. So, um, you know, I'm excited to get back out there live in July and August. And, uh, you know, so anyway, if you have questions about that, you can, you can always contact me about, you know, doing the high paying private event stuff, uh, Austin, you know, as far as the, the streaming stuff and guys, you know, connect with each other. If you see comments here, make, make some friends, you know? We're all in this together, right? Before and after this this pandemic, we're all in this together. So thanks for tuning in. Um, and thank you again, Austin, for your time. And I think I'm going to put a bow on it. We're going to wrap this up. Cool. Yo, thanks for having me. This was great. Yeah. You know what we should do? We should actually play together. I'm doing a weekly broadcast like this where I bring in a guest. I would love to have you on my show if you got time. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, I'd love to do it. Okay.
Awesome. All right, guys. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Austin. Bye, y'all. Take care.